Okay, I got all the fabric cut out. I made a slight modification to the pocket design that I showed you guys. I went ahead and did the little notch out here uh, so that we can get this in the seam and fold it over. Uh, I don't know why I didn't do it originally. I just kind of forgot about it. But anyway, anytime I do pockets, I always do these notches on it. So I was, don't know what was going on. But if you need me to show you how to draft these, all you do is your regular pocket. Just come in here about a quarter of an inch, whatever your seam allowance is. And it could be five eighths, half, quarter, whatever. Since I'm doing surged uh, seams, it's going to be fairly short. So I just did a quarter inch on it. And this is what gets sewn in the seam and it frees the pocket up. So anyway, uh, you'll see an X on this while I'm cutting knit fabrics. Sometimes it's really hard to tell which side's which on solids. I put the right side together and I use the salvage edge to figure that out. The salvage rolls to the wrong side on knits. So I'll put the salvage sides together and I'm sorry, the right side together and using the salvage as my guide. And then I put an X on each side of the fabric uh, to make sure that, well, I'll see each side, this side didn't get one. Either that or it just didn't show up. Let me get my chalk. There we go. Anyway, so put a check on each side. There's one on that side and one didn't show up on that side. So let's try that again. No, if I had these stacked up on each other, it just didn't take or what? Okay, I've decided to do everything on this Singer um, 6800C and it includes a walking foot and I think this is the overcast foot, it's the foot F, I haven't really looked it up but I did a little test and this will work on surging around the edge. If you have a serger and a cover stitch machine, by all means use it. I'm going to try to keep this at the lowest common denominator. This machine you can get for, I don't know, 280, 300 bucks or whatever. And uh, most machines have the features this has. So we'll be able to do our buttonhole on it using our buttonhole foot. And the first thing I need to do is over cast the edges of these pockets. And so I'm just going to start on one and then I'll stop the camera. You'll get the idea of what I'm doing. Um, I'm not going to overcast on this indented area where the pocket opening is. I'm just going to go from here all the way around the pocket back to this side. That's all I'm going to do. So let me get started with it and show you what we're going to do. Yeah, it's got a little guide on it here where you can put your fabric next to it and I've lowered the tension down to 1.5 because it's going two times then and over, two times and over and if your tension's too tight it'll really bunch it up so just try starting at that value if you're using this machine just a straight stick or I'm sorry a, a regular machine with zigzag ability to do that so it looks like uh, the width is 5 and the length is 2.5. It's the stitch number 4 on memory 2 on this machine. So here we go. see if that thread matches so well but it does a pretty good job you'll want to turn the speed all the way up when you do this because it'll take a while it's not quite as fast as the surgery is and I 
keep my finger right here to keep the fabric up next to the guide because if I don't, it'll push it away right there where the needle is. And I'll stop and make sure it moves over a little bit. There we go. see what I'm doing here I'm going to continue to go all the way around this and then I'll do the other three and then we'll move forward to sewing the pockets on the pants so let me get this done it's going to take a little while and again I'm trying to keep this as the simplest lowest common denominator for people that just have a machine so um, let me get through with this and we'll start uh, sewing the pockets on okay guys I'll just finish this one and hopefully you can see the stitch it's nice and even along the edge the machine did a really good job a little hiccup right there it looks like when i may have missed a stitch that's when you get a little bit too close kind of fold it over there a little bit but what i discovered is if you keep your hand right in front of the foot and keep pushing the fabric over keep making sure it's to the close to the edge that, that kind of worked the best but anyway you can see I stopped there and uh, I started right right here so we didn't do anything on the uh, little flap there so that's it so okay I just thought I'd show you the results of it I'm gonna do the next three and then we'll move on okay I'm gonna do a close-up here and show you the best way I've, I've found to keep this fabric consistently underneath the foot so here we go. I put one finger here and I keep one finger right here to keep it up next to this uh, guide. So. And I kind of push just a little bit, a little bit of a bubble up to let it pull and feed it. That's why you see my hands moving. don't do this and keep this finger right here with it pushed in it'll start pushing the fabric away so this one right here pushing it in this one right here keeping it next to this guide and you'll come out with a good stitch feed too much in there or it'll bubble up and you'll get a kind of a fold in the fabric. Just give it a little bit to feed. And the bubble that I'm pushing up right here is coming up about even with that foot. So. Turn the corner, 
I'm just gonna go all the way through this to show you the technique and then uh, I'll move on and do the other two so too if I feed that fabric just right over the edge of that white guide that seems to help too so I'm kind of keeping it there and it, it pulls it down once it goes under it. So. Okay, that's what it looks like before you press it. And you do want to press it, don't iron it. Just take steam, put down along the seam line, and it'll keep it from uh, misforming. But it kind of stretches it out a little bit. And by putting the steam on it, it'll it'll round it back up. So anyway, that's it. Uh, I just want to show you that. So we'll move on here in just a minute. Let me finish up the other two and I'll get back. Okay, took some time and a lot of thread, but I surged all the way around the edges on these. And before you do that, make sure you have a full bobbin because it took a lot of thread. So, okay, now we're going to uh, put the pockets on. So we need to mark on the uh, back side or actually on the front side we're going to fold this over an inch for the elastic and we need to have our mark where that is so that um, the pocket can get caught up just under the edge of the seam right here on the front side so I'm going to go ahead and fold these over an inch and put a mark there and then I'll put the pocket just barely above it um, so that I'm sure that when we put the elastic waistband on fold it over that it'll come and it'll catch that pocket so it's not flopping around on top so let me do that first um, I'm just gonna fold this over an inch put a chalk mark there and then we'll sew the pockets on so let's do that next Okay, I took the time to go ahead and serge all the edges of the fabric. And when you do that, make sure you have a full bobbin because mine was completely full and I'm down to probably about 10% left. So I'll have enough to do what I'm going to do here though. Uh, what I did is I folded, let me find my side with my mark on it. It's going to be on the right side. Jeez, I can't even see my mark. Anyway, I folded it over an inch, so it must be right there. Let me remark, make sure I've got the right. Oh, it's over here. No wonder I can't find it. 
Anyway, so I folded this over an inch the way the waistband is going to be put in and then just above the line I put a mark right there. So that's where our pocket is going to go. The top of our pocket. So this is the right side of the fabric on top. And uh, you can see I've got my X on the wrong side right here. Right there. So I'll turn it over on the right side. And then we're going to take our pocket and we're going to put the wrong side up to the right side. That way we'll have the right side in the fabric. So I'll put my top there. Move it over to where the little flap is. So that's what we're going to sew on. I'm a little bit too high. Come down just a little bit. I think we've got it. So what we're going to do is we're going to sew the pocket on. Get these squeezers. That serge stitch line is kind of grabbing a hold of the fabric and not letting it line up very well. Alright, there we go. That looks good. we got our mark lined up at the top. I put the walking foot on the machine since we're sewing one knit and so I'm going to sew right in between the edge and the width of this seam right here because I need enough fabric to fold it over once we're, we're done here so I want to make sure I'm not too far over and I am right there. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to sew right down the middle of this this flat part here. There looks good. Okay, keep it on the edge and here we go. do is and you can go to you can press it if you need to do this As a matter of fact I'm going to do it since I'm on the top on my industrial machine I just open this up and sew it down but you're probably going to be on a machine like this and it gets up in the air it's hard to keep stuff flat uh, so what we're going to do is we want to make sure that this seam is pressed over towards the pants
so it needs to needs to stay over here and then we're going to stitch it down to make sure it stays down on that side right there so let me press it real quick and uh, then we'll sew it down Okay, we've got it down now. I'm actually going to sew on the wrong side because I want to make sure I'm getting at the edge of that. And you just want to make sure your tension looks good on the other side. Uh, be sure and, and set your tension back uh, after you've done the overcasting stitch. So you'll have a, a, a good stitch. If you forget to do that, you may have to rip your stitches out. So. All right, here we go. And this is basically called understitching. It's to make sure a seam stays where you want it to stay. Go ahead and tighten the tension on the foot a little bit. cut all right now we have that sides pocket sewed on and you can see how that flap keeps it, it loose from being tied up on the edge so now what you can do is fold it over and you'll see now how it wants to stay fold it over. So what you want to do is press this on this side and you have to be careful and don't let it come over too far just let it come over far enough to get that seam good and flat and that way from the outside all you'll see is, is that right there that, that little seam so I'm going to keep pushing it over and I'll press it. Let me do that. Okay, let me show you. We've got it pressed. So that's what it will look like on that side. You want to press it so that these seams on this side aren't going inward so that's why you put that little flap on there it allows you to keep those seams out here nice and flat so now that we've done that i will sew on the other ones to each side and again marking the spot where it needs to be put in and this is the right side of the fabric the x is on that side so i'll take the pocket Put the wrong side to the right side. Line it up with the mark. Back on the machine we go. Get this where I can see it. Feel for you guys that have to sew on these home machines up in the air like this. I'm used to a completely flat surface of an industrial machine. It makes doing this a little bit easier. And if you have to, you can pin. I don't pin anything. I just sew it up. So, all right, here we go.
Okay, now we have that one on. I'll press it the same way. I'll make sure that the seam's going towards the back. And like this right here. And then we'll be ready to sew the pocket and everything together on this side. And so I'll do that real quickly and show you how to do that. You just repeat the same step on the other leg and then we'll move forward. Okay, we have this one pressed. Now let's sew that seam down like we did on the other one. Make sure it stays anchored down. Cut that off so you get this end cut off. Sorry, I hit the, the button for it to go on its own full speed, so it took off. So it should turn it off because it will get going really fast when you have it on the fastest speed. But no harm, it just kind of sewed up the uh, side of the surged edge here, so we're good. Okay, and be careful when you mess with these machines like that because if you're trying to hit the back space, that button, I think I got it in a bad spot. It's just right above that. And so my thumb is so big that when I hit the back space, I hit the, uh, the button, the automatic sewing button. <clears throat> okay, let me go and press this one over to the back like I did that one. Get it headed in the right direction, and then we'll put these two together and sew them together. Okay, let me show you where you need to press it to. You want that seam right there on the edge when you fold it. And then you'll see the stitch that we did to hold the seam in uh, down the, the front there. So, okay. Now, we need to lay these front side together find my mark I'm gonna have to do this on a uh, table so let me go do that and get it together and then I'll show you how we sew around the pocket and the opening stuff so let me do that okay got my wonder clips on here so what we're going to do is we're going to sew the seam up here together so we'll come down here come there do a bar tack come up here go all the way around the pocket back over to here do a part bar tack and then come all the way down here so. Get it under the foot, get it sewed. 
think I've got enough thread in the bobbin. I have to fill it after this, it looks like. Alright. Here we go. Stay. The foot riser sits right on top of that walking foot. It makes it hard to find. Okay, that should be far enough. Let's stop with my needle down. on upside down. Sticking out right here, I might as well go ahead and cut it. It's convenient. Okay, now we'll just sew the pocket together so nothing comes out of it. These seams lined up. Here we go. Seam over and line it up. So we'll put the foot down. Turns doing things over, so they're easier to get off. showing how to use these you always put the clear side down and sit right there and put them on upside down all right I'll deal with the other ones when we get around there just won't be able to get these off quickly all right here we go Try not to square off any of these corners on the pockets. It makes it easier when they're rounded.
stain just to the, the left side of the surged edge here. this seam right here. seam. Now all we got to do is sew up the, the small seam. Shouldn't need any clips for this.
come back now. Come on. This fabric is so stretchy. So I didn't have to have as much ease to it as I normally do because it will stretch. sewed up get this thread cut now we have to put the pants together it will be right side together to sew the uh, the back seam up we have our pocket in there get that down in position and you can see where our pocket is there. Her hand's smaller than mine is, so can't get my whole hand in there. But anyway, that's the pocket opening. Looks nice. Just blends right in. Okay, now we'll put the the pants together. We'll put uh, the right sides together and sew up the crotch seam and then we'll be done with that part. And then it's a matter of doing the waistband and the hem and we're finished. So let me get that put together and I'll show you what it looks like and uh, we'll go from there. Three, two, one. Okay, whoops. Okay, more and more of these things fell. I don't know where it came off. I'll we'll figure it out in a minute. All right, so we got everything lined up here on the uh, crutch seam, so we're gonna sew it up. We have right sides together. So you do one pair of pants wrong side out, take a right side and push it in, line the seams up, and uh, it'll come together fairly quickly. So, all right. On the dang foot lifter. Here we go. Stay down. There we go. Still got some thread left. 
the bobbin. Starting to push my luck on that. Probably should build it up. crosses so I've got a bunch of clips here to keep it lined up to keep those seams perfectly lined up better when you're sewing on a curve to honor the curve instead of trying to stretch it straight and sew it. started. Alright, let's see how it looks. Go ahead and widen up the view here. Alright, there's the wrong side out with our pockets. go. There's our pants with our pockets. No heavy holes in our seams. Everything looks good. Crotch lined up perfectly. All right, let me get the seams pressed. And uh, next thing we're going to do is get our fold over and we're going to put our drawstring on the outside of this one. Uh, so <clears throat> I'll have to fold over an inch and mark the side on each side of the seam on the front seam. And we'll sew the buttonhole buttonholes in next for the uh, drawstring. And then we'll put the elastic in it. And the drawstring and we'll be good to go so okay I'll see you in a few minutes let me get this pressed and we'll go from there
three, two, one. Okay, we have our bobbin thread loaded up now, so we're going to do our zigzag to put the waistband in, the elastic in the waistband, so here we go. Okay, we're going to stop with the needle down, and I'm going to try to keep this good and level all the way around, so here we go. Keep that black line lined up with this seam. So I'm going to pull on it. I'm going to pull on it hard. Alright, here we go. going to match up. I'm going to get it close, but pay a little bit better attention. This one, I need to make sure I keep it lined up good. It's okay to be a little bit off here and there, but you don't want it to cascade throughout the whole waistband. Alright, got that pulled nice and tight. I'll go ahead and put a wonder clip right here. Try to keep that band from rolling. It's trying to roll. When you see me pulling the, the elastic behind it, trying to keep it flat, got a lot going on here. This thing is keeping this stuff flat. It wants to curl under when I get it tight. Alright, here we go. Try to get your needle always stop down on the elastic when you do this too. To, it holds better on the inside than on the outside on the fabric. A little bit more there to hang on to. A little less tension. Alright, there we go.
Threads here. All right, this section, the next one, and we are done. I'll break this down into eighths, make it a little bit easier. Okay, here we go. of it. There's the other half. band now. So I get all this fabric around here sitting right. marks are probably lining up where the, the actual waistband winds up because the front's a little bit longer than the back is. So it's just kind of a guesstimate. You don't want to overdo it, over force it if it doesn't want to go because this one will lay good and flat. Alright, here we go. Gotta get that up just a little bit. There we go. thing we have to do is put our buttonholes in. So I need to mark, they end up being at about an inch and a half apart on the front. So that will be right here. Fold it over. Needs to be about right there. Uh -huh. 
what I'm going to use a temporary marker. is folded over. So we'll need one about right there. And one about right there. foot. Oh, come on, slide out. Things tight. Okay, I'm going to do a test buttonhole, make sure. Size looks good. trash can. Okay, pour labor down. And let's see what we have. Let's see, buttonholes. What number do I want? Just a square one. So we're going to do number 23. is M2. Alright, here we go. not easy with this thing, it's so tight. Alright, that went down two clicks. Let's try that and see if that's a little bit better. Oh, what happened to my thread? Must have pulled it out. All right. 
We thread the machine. Get it down through the hole there. There we go. Let's try another button hole. should work. That's about the right size. Okay. Your pants up here from the front seam. Shredding the thread. But we have a buttonhole. Okay. No, it's not buttonhole thread, but shouldn't be doing that. Tension just a little bit. shot. Still something in it, but I want it jammed it through anyway. Let's 
see if we can make the, the other one be done with the buttonholes. those on the floor. All right, now we fold our waistband over. And let's see, I need to clip out my buttonholes here before I do anything else. just for a string to go through so I have pull string. I won't be using fabric to make this so that should be enough for it to go through. Alright now we just fold this over and sew it in. I'm using a needle that is for stretch fabric so it should be able to go through if you if you actually want to sew through the waistband uh, it's best to use that kind of a needle it's got a bigger eye on it and uh, it won't damage the elastic and it will keep it keep it down Okay. I'll stretch this and sew it too. So Try to keep everything down, keep it flat much as possible. Let me get this under the foot first. stitch length for this. Alright.
Okay, here we go. trying to keep it tight without rolling over the elastic. It's a lot easier when you don't have pockets. <laughs> you kind of get in the way. Alright, here we go for the next part. trying to do some small parts at a time here. about made it around. Keep this seam lined up. It's important. Okay. Now we can concentrate on this last little quarter.
one's a little bit twisted right there. Let's see if I can get that out. Distribute it a little bit more evenly. go now all we have to do is hem it so we'll roll these up uh, she only wants a half inch roll up in them so do about a half inch and uh, just sew a straight seam around it since we're not using cover stitch and we'll be good uh, let me get the pull string real quick and uh, we'll put it in there Okay, I've got the pull string. The hole's small, so I won't be able to use anything but my hands to run this through, so it'll take a minute. It may take a while, as a matter of fact. As short as this thing is, I've just got the end of the that piece in there to pull through so trying to get as far as I can all right well this is going to take a while so let me get this through but I'm just getting it through a little bit at a time and uh, then I'll come back once I've got it through so Okay, got the tie string through. Maybe a little bit long of it is, I'll cut it off and meld it back together again. But anyway, there's that. So now all we need to do is roll this up about a half to three quarters of an inch roughly and uh, then hem it on the machine. And I just need to kind of stretch this when I sew it because this fabric stretches so much and it won't seems to break. So you can use a zigzag if you want to, but uh, I'm going to use a stitch length of 3.5. 
and stretch it out. So, all right, let me press this under and we'll do the hem. Okay, we've got it pressed up somewhere around three quarters of an inch. And I'm going to sew from the inside. Get my tension set where it'll look good on the uh, underside too. So here we go. I'm going to stretch this as I sew it too. So here we go. All right, here we go. stretch it and sew it it'll stretch out some but then when you steam press it it'll go right back where it was so don't worry about that because it'll look a little bit stretched out off, cut our threads off, and that's one leg, one more to go, and we will be done. Okay, we're going to start on the inside leg seam. down here okay back tack and off we go Here we go. Done. 
Let me do a quick press on everything and uh, I'll show you what it looks like as a finished product. So give me just a minute to press it. Okay, we got it all pressed up now. That's basically what they look like. So they're just casual workout shorts or lounge shorts or whatever you want to call them. So anyway, that shows you how you can just use a regular sewing machine to, to achieve this. Obviously, if you have a cover stitch machine, a serger and stuff, it'll be a little bit quicker. Especially when it comes to surging those seams, it took a long time to get all the way around this stuff. So, but I wanted to show the lowest common denominator uh, of a machine, showing people just with a regular machine you can do this. So, hopefully, you guys found this helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any questions, and uh, I'd appreciate it if you would uh, comment on what you see here, and uh, let me know if I can help you with anything else. That's it. Take care.